Gemini 19, a large archaic volume. We imagine in this old book, leather bound and a bit dusty perhaps, what has been written down are the experiences and the interpretations and perceptions, the wisdom of our tribe. And it's been sacredly treated and, and respected and, and given very special importance. It, it equates, I suppose, to the Bible or the Quran or various other sacred texts. But it's more than that. It's, um, it, it's metaphorical. This volume of opinions and teachings and so on is much wider than just one book. It, it's, it's our culture. It, it's what we have picked up from our society from the past. And we're aware that reality itself is momentary here and now. So we have to make it up here and now. It's different from how it's ever been before. So we, we do not give slavish and worshipful attention to what was written down as past wisdom. But what we do do is look at what was thought before and see what of that is still appropriate, what needs to evolve. This is how we develop in our own wisdom as a generation as well as as an individual. So the first thing we do is, is to honour and respect what has been passed down as the wisdom that comes down from our elders. A lot of it seems to a younger person unnecessarily controlling, life-denying, a bit too serious. And yet we're taking wisdom from people who've come through some hard times, hard times that we have not experience ourselves yet until a certain level of maturity and and it would be wise for us to acknowledge that we don't know how we would act in difficult times where the people who wrote the archaic history they they do they know how to cope with this stuff because they've coped with it we've only got the the idea of what might work they actually saw what did work however it was then, not now. So there's this interaction between respecting the past and having to recreate the future out of some track of behavior. If we didn't have this received wisdom to, to learn, we would simply have to reinvent the wheel. We would have to go back to scratch every time and and do things from beginning. And, and that's just so wasteful. That, that denies the possibility of the speed of evolution. So we have to take it from our elders and those who went before us, the ancestors. We have to take their wisdom at face value and try it out first. If we can make it work, then it deserves to pass the test of time and to be taken into the future. If it doesn't work, then we need to rewrite it, make our own minds up about what we need to do now. And that will always be the case. If you are a person um, treading the path of spiritual development, then you're going to have to read books written by people who have been thinking about this question a long, long time. We go back for thousands of years and people were still philosophizing and working out the nature of reality. And some of their opinions aren't appropriate today. Some were wrong then, some have become wrong in the meantime, but some of them are actually eternal or archetypal, we could say. Certain things that we can actually study from the past, we need to. We need to keep them alive and we need to give them lip service. In other words, speak of them. The old mysteries, they need to be brought up to date into current terminology and, and passed on, passed on to our children, passed on through our friends and so on. Otherwise, these wisdoms, these powerful series of words of guidance and so on, otherwise these have no value, that they're, they're not given the importance that they deserve. 
these are more important, these wisdoms, than our buildings that were built a thousand years ago, keeping them alive because it's giving us a, a window into history and, and the mistakes that we've made then, the wisdom that we learn then. This is kept alive in various different ways and through architecture and, and other ways of honoring the past. Yes, it's very important, but nothing as important as the written word, the written word that is understood on a somatic level, the body sensation of that wisdom. We need to recreate that wisdom in real form as, as body knowledge and then rewrite it in current phrasing and so on so that it's, it's actually kept alive as a real thing. Unlike ancient books that have not been reinterpreted in the, in the modern vernacular, we can't understand them properly. Their metaphors are all bent out of shape. Their specific wisdoms are sometimes simply not contextualized. Thou shalt not kill in the Bible. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean kill other people? What about the military? Does that mean kill animals? What about meat eaters? You know, what does it mean? I kill things. I, I kill mosquitoes. I kill not myself, but I get somebody else to kill my meat for me. What about that? You know, was this a metaphor? Did it mean that thou shalt not kill people? We don't know what it means, really. And even if we do know what it means, we don't know whether it was actually meant to be an eternal truth or a localized truth. And the desert lands where it w was given, they have different constraints. You know, that's why circumcision was so important in those parts of the world, because it was otherwise a health hazard. It's why you don't eat pigs in certain parts of the world, because it goes off quickly. So some of these spiritual laws that were given, they're actually tips, really, for living life healthily where they were given, and they don't really travel geographically, and they don't always travel through time. So we have to be pretty careful looking at these ancient archaic volumes just to, to, to put it in, in real terms in the context of where we're living now and what we need now. But if we do that, then they have tremendous value. Our sense of reality itself derives from the teachings that we receive from those who went before, how to do things and why to do them. And we can evolve out of that. The main way in that which they give us value is, is that we can, we can stand on the shoulders of those who went before us, and, and so we can evolve. That's the, the, the most particular thing. 